Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Hao Hu. Uh, today is my pleasure to present our research paper, uh, Temporal Order Based First Take or Hashing for Fast Attention Deficit, Deficit Hyperactive Disorder Detection. So I'm the first author of our paper, and the second author, Joy, he is an undergraduate from the University of Central Florida. And uh, the last author, Professor Guo Junqi, he's my academic uh, super, uh, advisor. So here is the outline for my today's uh, presentation. We first intro uh, introduce our paper with some background pro uh, problem definition and the related works. And then we propose the first take-all hashing framework and the corresponding optimal projection learning algorithm. Then followed is the uh, experimental results, which show that uh, our pro pro proposed method can outperform the both unsupervised and supervised baselines. And then finally, we will conclude our paper. So first, here is some background about the uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Uh, in the following presentation, we will use the ADHD for short. So ADHD is a very common brain disorder among the children and the adolescents. According to the data from the uh, child trends, so the number of children that diagnosed with ADHD almost increasing every year during the past decades. So ADHD can bring many negative impacts during the uh, children's uh, development. And now the root cause of the ADHD still remains unclear, and uh, it's already draw a lot of attention, a lot of attention and efforts to trying to find out the reason behind the ADHD. So in our approach, we try to mine the useful information that related to the reason of ADHD through the fMRI data. So here, the fMRI means the functional uh, mag magnetic resistant uh, image. So. We mainly focus on the fMRI time courses because fMRI time courses uh, is a time is some kind of time series that can provide the uh, plus the neural active neural activity of the human brains and it always offers some uh, fe feature rich reputation of high level functional organization of the brain. According to some research, that there are some temporal order difference between uh, in the fMRI time courses between the healthy and the ADHD people. So in our work, we want to, we try to encode such temporal order differences into some compact uh, representation so that ADHD can be detected in a very efficient way. So here is uh, our uh, definition, uh, the, our problem definition. Given a time courses of human brain acquired for by the fMRI, we want to encode them into some compact binary representation. And uh, using the ranking-based classifier and the similarity search, we can output some label indicating whether a people uh, have the ADHD or not. To encode the, uh, the time courses, we propose a first take or hashing, which can convert the very length time courses into some compact fixed size hash codes. Before introdu uh, introducing the FTA, we will first uh, give some related works. Our related works can divide into two parts. First is time series and alignment technology. So a typical uh, time, a time series and uh, alignment technology, including the dynamic time warping, which using the dynam dynamic programming method to find the optimal distance between the two very length time series. And also, there are, all, well, there are some va uh, variations in the uh, the dynamic time warping, including the derivative dynamic time warping. Another part is, uh, is about the ADHD detection. So uh, in, 2000, in 2012, there, there is a global competition about the AD, ADHD, which is called AD, ADHD 200 held. And the, the winner uh, method of the, that competition can reach a, a state of the art detection a rate of the ADHD. And also some, some uh, other works about ADHD, including the, uh, the day, the, this paper pro pro proposed in the 2014, which uh, proposed a new feature about to help the detect the ADHD. So here is our first take uh, framework. We begin with some uh, region of interest of, uh, from, uh, specified by the human atlas. In each uh, ROI, the time courses for that ROI can be extracted. We project those time courses onto a set of k-latent patterns. So here we call them latent patterns because we do not know uh, their exact meaning. 
the projection will, will result in some projection sequence. And then we conduct the operation called the FT comparison to generate the hash code for the entire time courses. So since the, the ROI and the, and the time course extraction is not a contribution, we will extract the uh, ROIs from, some, uh, from uh, specified by some commonly used uh, brain atlas. The extraction method is very simple. We just average the, all the, uh, the, vo the voxel time courses within, some, uh, within the ROIs and uh, using the average the time courses to represent the, all the time activity, uh, the brain activity among, uh, in, in the, that region. Then the, project, uh, the projection, the projection is also very straight, uh, straightforward. Uh, the projection is, uh, is just the dot product between the time courses and latent patterns. Uh, there is, uh, the value uh, of the projection sequence can be interpreted as some cosine distance between the time courses and latent patterns. Or more specifically, the uh, confidential score about, uh, about how likely uh, certain uh, latent patterns will appear uh, in a certain time. To introduce what the FT, uh, FT comparison is, we will give you an example. Suppose we have three, uh, three different uh, projection sequence, and each sequence we can find a maximum value for each and their corresponding time. So instead of interested in, with the uh, maximum value S here, we're only interested in the ordinal relationship between the time, uh, between the appearing time. Then in these cases, we will have a such relationship T2 smaller than T1, smaller than T3. In FTA, we, in, we use the index of the smallest uh, T value to represent the entire time course. So here, since the T2 has the smallest value, we will index the whole uh, time, uh, time courses uh, with the uh, number two. So here is the example of the FT, how the F, uh, FTA works. So to f f uh, we, will give a, we will then give a formal uh, description about the FTA. We first find the, uh, we first find, uh, f uh, calculate the softmax for the project sequence. So the value of the project uh, softmax sequence uh, represents the pro uh, probability that a certain pattern K appears at a, a certain time T. In this case, uh, the time that the pattern appears can be, uh, can be calculated as the expectation of the, uh, through, the, uh, through the time scale T. So we call them the uh, ex expected moment. And for each latent pattern, we can uh, we can find a specific, uh, uh, unique expect moment, and then we can use the index of the first appearing pattern to index uh, uh, to encode the entire time courses. So this is uh, how the FTA algorithm works. That will be nature to have some such questions that what kind of latent pattern will be useful to distinguish a different time, uh, different time courses. Uh, and then how to find the, opti uh, the best or the optimal projections. So here we believe that a projection is good when we can satisfy three different conditions. The first, uh, the generated FTA code should be discri dis uh, discriminative for different type of uh, TCs. Here we, we use the TC to represent uh, time courses for short. And then a latent patterns should be orthogonal, so such that the latent pattern may contain as many uh, as much discriminative information as as can to decide to distribute to distribute different type of uh, patients. And the last one is that the latent patterns should be salient. We will give a further explanation in the following slides. So before we give you our learning algorithm. We want to show uh, some more definitions here. So the first is that we define HKI, which repre re represents the probability that a pattern K appear first in the TCXI. This is just a very simple uh, softmax function. And, as, and then we will define the HIJ, which represents the probability that the same patterns appears first in two different types of TCXI and XJ. Uh, here, the definition of uh, HIJ uh, only involves some basic uh, uh, probability calculation. So, to, to find out, uh, 
to generate the distributive FT codes, we will uh, consider both uh, uh, the T6, X, I, J, and their corresponding labels. There will be two cases. The first, when the label of the X, I, and J are the same, the FT should generate similar FT codes, which means we should maximize the probability of uh, H, I, J. And on the, uh, uh, on the other, uh, in the other hand, if the XI and XJ are in the different uh, category, we need the FT should generate the dissimilar FT codes, which means we should minimize the HI and HJ, uh, HIJ. So this process can be used a single uh, loss function to represent. Here we use the cross entropy loss to minimize the maximize and minimize the HIJ. So the here, uh, the LIJ represents the pairwise label. It's equals to one if and only if they have the same label and uh, uh, equals to zero when, uh, when otherwise. Then we'll consider the orthogonality. Orthogonality is very important in, in our learning algorithm. Suppose there are, there are two different uh, uh, latent patterns which are non orthogonal, which means they may be very uh, hi highly correlated and their uh, experiment moment can be very close to each other. So in this case, it will be very sensitive uh, to, the, to some small perturbation and the, the warping. On the contrary, if, the, if two latent patterns are on, on orthogonal, we can, there, will, there will be little correlations and they'll generate the, the very distinct uh, expect moments. In this case, we'll have a very distinct uh, ti uh, the expect, uh, time, uh, temporal order between the uh, ex expected moments. So in this case, we prefer that the two, uh, two pa uh, latent patterns should be, uh, uh, should be orthogonal. And we want, just want to minimize the, 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 the dot product between the, uh, some, the, the unit, uh, there are unit vectors. And then the saliency. What he, well, well, when we call a latent pattern is salient, uh, is salient, we only call them is that uh, when the latent pattern just distributed, distributed in the very small time region, instead of just the unico, uh, unically, unically di distributed on the entire uh, time scale. So in our cases, it's, it's very straightforward to show that the more salient a latent pattern is, the more accurate uh, its, expected mo its expected moment is. So our goal is to try to increase the saliency, which means we need to ma minimize the variance along the time t. So our goal is trying to minimize the time t for all the uh, softmax uh, sequences. So the last step is put all the constraints together to get our uh, final loss function. Our loss function can be consist of the three different parts, which, uh, which uh, indicates the cross entropy loss and the projection orthogonality and also the, and, and also the variance. So it's not uh, hard to find out our uh, loss function is totally differentiable, which which means that it can be optimized by some simple gradient-based method directly without any uh, relaxation or some, te uh, some further techniques. So what, uh, what we discussed before is just uh, gen uh, for generate a single FTA codes. To generate uh, multiple uh, FTA codes is also very straightforward. We just need to uh, project a uh, TC, uh, TCs onto, a set, uh, onto different set of latent patterns. And this lo uh, these different patterns are, uh, are initialized in different ways. And then each set of latent patterns will generate uh, their, 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 their separate the FTA codes. So this is possible since we use a softmax to define our, uh, to define our loss function. And the softmax is not convex. So it may, our learning will, will be converged at, at, at multiple local minima. So with the generated multiple codes, uh, the, this code can be sent into some KM-based or, or ranking-based uh, classifiers to, uh, to, 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 and, and, uh, to, use the, to identify the ADHD subject uh, 
very efficiently. So we will show our, we will show our uh, exper experiment results. So first is about the data set. We use the ADHD 200 data set, which consists of the uh, 776 record, records of the fMRI data collected by eight different sites. And uh, among them, 491 are without ADHD, and while, while the 285 are, the, uh, are diagnosed with the ADHD. Uh, the whole data set is pre-processed by the Asina pipelines. So uh, the more information about this data set can be found the, on the Add on the link uh, listed uh, in the slides. Here uh, is some um, example of uh, generated uh, softmax sequences after we project uh, some, uh, some samples from data set onto a set of learned uh, patterns. You can see the two patterns have a very uh, distinct appearing time and also the different uh, temporal orders uh, between the healthy people and the ADHD subjects. So about evaluation metrics, we report four different uh, evalu evaluation metrics, including the prediction accuracy, the sensitivity, which is the true positive rate, and the specif specifi uh, specificity, which uh, equals to the true negative rate, and also the J st statistics. Here is a result uh, of the comparison with the unsupervised baselines. Here we compare three different uh, uh, dynamic time warping based uh, uh, baseline, uh, dynamic time warping based uh, baselines. So you can see, except the sensitivity, uh, our, our proposed FT method are out, uh, outperforms almost all the uh, metrics uh, compared to the baselines. The only thing that our method lower, lower than the DTW baseline is the sensitivity, which is a true, a true positive rate. So we believe that this is caused by the unbalancing of the original data set because the original data set contains nearly uh, five instances that without HD, and, uh, but only about uh, 300 uh, instances with HHD. So it's quite unbalanced. So our training may just uh, bias towards identify those uh, uh, negative samples. So here is uh, some speed and, and the accuracy comparison between, uh, between the uh, supervised, uh, unsupervised baselines. In, you know, the uh, one disadvantage of the DTW baseline is that they'll be very slow, slow since they involve the dynamic, time, dynamic, dynamic programming uh, calculation. So in our method, you can see, our uh, our method can much uh, can outperform the unsupervised baselines both in the accuracy and the speed. So then we prepare some uh, supervised baselines. Those two supervised baselines are introduced in our related to work before. Here, the GHU method is the winner of the ADHD competition 2012. The they not only just using the fMRI that the time series, but also use some other diagnosis information, such kind of se sex and uh, age and so on. So you can see, uh, despite our only use uh, uh, the time, time series information, our, our method can slightly outperform the uh, baselines. And the, our sensitivity, especially, we can get more uh, true positive rates, which means we can that identify the ADHD better. And then we compile the, the uh, baselines with the, the uh, AGDM. So in these cases, they just train the train their method separately. So we're just following their, uh, the, the, the experiment setting. And the, in this case, you can see that our, our method just out, outperforms every aspect of the baselines. And we also find that uh, in the neural image and the o o o OHSU, uh, that they are, have a higher sensitivity. So we just do some uh, further analysis about uh, the composition of the subset. So yeah, th so we can have on the balanced data set, the, our, uh, our performance of sensitivity will be much better. So here's the conclusion of our method. We propose a novel FT algorithm, and we use the resultant hash code to 
uh, efficiently di di uh, detect the ADH subjects. And we designed an uh, efficient algorithm to learn the opt optimal projections. And our method can outperform the base, uh, both the unsupervised and unsupervised baselines. So this is my pre presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so uh, I was wondering, did you compare it with uh, wavelet kind of analysis, where wavelets are generally orthogonal, and you can choose salient wavelet basis, and then project it to wavelet uh, space, and use the coefficients as feature or some kind of coding. So uh, and it's very much used for time series analysis. So just wondering if you guys used that also for comparing this kind of data. Uh, sorry, can you see your question again? Sorry? Can you see your uh, question again? So um, did you compare it with wavelet analysis? Uh, wavelet analysis generally is also gives you orthogonal basis, and you can choose salient um, basis there and code the time series. and. Um, then use it for classification, that code. So, and it's generally used for time series analysis. Mm -hmm. um, so, is there any comparison you guys did? Just wondering. You mean, can we use this to other uh, data sets? Or? No, on, on this data set? I suppose the answer is no, but it's, uh, it's an interesting suggestion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So do you know the actual percentage of uh, people with HD, ADHD yes. in the real world? What's the percentage? Percentage? I think it should be about the one third maybe in the, like the age between the 13 or the, and the 17. Okay, so do you simulate this situation uh, in your algorithm? So basically, you make the data is unbalanced with one third, one -third instances with ADHD and uh, yeah, do do you simulate this kind of situation? Uh, we do not. We do not simulate this mm. uh, procedure because we we use a data that is collected from the real world from different uh, uh, age sites. So we didn't do any like the rebalancing or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again.